Hey everyone, it's Casey Funderburg and I'm joined by former Lady Vol, Tamika Ketchings. Tamika, how are you? What's keeping you motivated and positive during this time? I am doing great. You know, obviously, all of us are kind of confined to our house and I have moved myself outside, so I'm in our outside patio. So that has actually given me life every single day, just kind of being out in nature. But, uh, you know, I've got a lot of other things going on, obviously with the fever, the WNBA draft a few weeks ago, and just kind of getting prepared for the upcoming season. My sister and I have her own foundation. I got a tea shop. I mean, there's a lot of things to do. So uh, never a dull moment. The year 2020 is definitely not going the way a lot of people probably thought it would. But there's been some really positive moments in this year for you. Um, a big thing being, you know, inducted into the Women's Basketball Hall of Fame, the Naismith Memorial Hall of Fame. You know, when you found all of this out, how did you feel? How did you react? Wow. I think I'm still kind of like, not, I don't want to say disbelief, but uh, I think it's hard because you had, haven't really like done the celebrations. You haven't really been able to go out with the, the dinner, the family dinners. And, you know, I think besides that, like, I'm just super honored. And, you know, obviously for the Women's Basketball Hall of Fame, being in Knoxville, Tennessee, being able to come back. I worked at the, the Hall of Fame before. And then, uh, you know, over the years, a couple of my other coaches and uh, teammates have, have been inducted as well. So for me to have that opportunity, you know, and, and to be back in Knoxville and share it with our fans, like with the fans that have supported me for my whole collegiate career and beyond. So I'm really excited. Who was the that. first person you told once you found out? Call my mom. She answered. My dad didn't answer. Call my brother. He didn't answer. And then I called my sister. So just kind of like down the, the chain of line. I want to take it back to your playing days as a Lady Vault, you know, playing for Pat Summit. You talked about her a little bit. What was that experience like and how did that experience shape you into who you are today? I mean, it's one of the best decisions I've ever made in my life. First time I saw Pat on TV, I was in eighth grade and I just remember watching TV. I was sitting on the couch and I was telling my mom, gosh, like, I'm so bored. I want something to do. And I was flipping through the channels and somehow I ended up on, you know, just like, a pair of eyes and then as the camera like panned back and I got to see orange all over the place like it was uh, at Thompson Bowling Arena and I just remember like being fixated on Pat but like that was the first time I really see seen women on national television and then I just remember in that moment I was like man if I could ever get good enough to play for her I would like that would be like a dream come true and then fast forward and you know, started getting recruiting letters from Howie Warlick and Mickey DeMoss and Al Brown to come to Tennessee. And I was just like, yeah, this is a joke. And then Pat ended up in my living room. And, uh, you know, then I, you know, signed to come to the University of Tennessee. And when I say it's the best decision, I mean, you know, Pat, obviously she wanted us to be the best on the court. But I think the thing I always talk about is she wanted us to be great on the court. She wanted us to be great in the classroom. And she wanted us to be great in the community. And I harp on that all the time because when you do those three, the biggest part of that was she wanted us to be just a great asset to like society and to our world. And you know, when you watch her and the way that she always carried herself, she was so humble, so down to earth, you know, I mean, literally could walk into a room and it was almost like a breath of fresh air just like came through the door. And that's just the type of person that she was and that she always was. She never changed. When we were on the court, of course, you know, in between those lines, I mean, the expectation was high, but you don't go to the University of Tennessee to not have high expectations put on you. And so for me, you know, looking at my four years there and there and, you know, what I was able to accomplish on the court, but I think even beyond that, like my faith got stronger, um, you know, just the community aspect and, and knowing that there were people like my mom and dad planted the seed when I was younger. But I think coming to Tennessee and seeing how much it was like in, in, engulfed in our life, like embedded in, we did so many different things, which even when I left and came up here to Indiana, like that had become a real big part of my life and who I am. And when you were at Tennessee, you played with Kelly. So you were able to be her teammate and now she's the coach. So you're able to see her coach. And what is that experience like for you just seeing her take those steps in her career and be the head coach for a program that you both played for? To us, Pat was invincible. Like nothing would ever happen to her. And then, you know, of course, everything happened and transpired. And 
I, I always kind of talk about her as in present tense, because even though she's not here with us earthly, like I know Pat watching over us in everything that we do. So we always joke around about having eyes in the back of her head. But I think KJ is the same way. You know, she was as a point guard for our team, played with her my freshman and sophomore year in uh, college. And I just remember like she was definitely the extension of Pat and who Pat was. And so it's really cool to see her transition into the coaching realm and her and John and you know how they moved around and, and coped in different areas. And I am really, really excited for her because I think she's just not only a great person, but walk like talking to her and watching her and kind of, you know, I commentated a few of the Lady Ball games this past season. So really being able to take a step back and, and talk to her more so as former Lady Balls expectations that were on us, you know, some of the expectations that are that are on these student athletes nowadays and how different it was, but, you know, trying to get to a point where you can play at a high level and you can expect these players to be at a higher level. Not only have you been able to move on with a team in the WNBA, but you also have worked in broadcasting, have started a broadcasting career. How did being a Lady Vol help you with that career? Yeah, I went from pretty much my third grade year, midway through my second grade, through my freshman year in college. Uh, and I was born with a hearing disability. And in second grade, I literally took a code of my life and I said, you know what, I'm not going to get made fun of for my hearing aid and I'm not gonna get made fun of for having to go to speech therapy. And so I took it upon myself and threw my hearing aid out. And so I went from midway through second grade all the way to my freshman year in college. And I remember at one point after practice, Pat just calling me in like, hey, you know, I wanna talk to you in the training room. And I walked in and her and our uh, athletic trainer at the time, Jenny Moshak was sitting in there. I'm like, okay, like what's going on? I know I'm not hurt, what's, you know? And she sat me down and basically just at the end of the conversation, she just said, look, one day your story will impact thousands, maybe millions of people. And I really, we feel like it would be in your best interest to get back into one in your hearing gate and to start going back to speech therapy. And I'm like, I've been to second grade all the way to this point, I've been without them. And I agree with her, you know, I got back into my hearing aids and started going back to speech therapy. Um, at, at UT and I think really she did set me up for my future and I never I mean I remember even when I the opportunity came to be a commentator and you know the producer reached out to me and said hey we'd love for you to, to come and you know to, to commentate for the SEC and I told her no and I think I was so scared of what if I can't can't hear, what if I don't talk right, what if I stutter, you know, all the things, all the unknown that we all get so scared of. Third time she came back and she, was, she kind of presented it in a different manner and I was like, you know what, okay, I'll try it. She said, we'll put you on for three games, try it, and you know, the rest is history. I just finished my fourth year. But I think really the conversation that I had with Pat in the beginning, the confidence that she had in me that I didn't have in myself. And even to this day, you know, like I, I think so much about those people that that plant those seeds in us every day and the fear that overwhelms a lot of us. And, you know, just like, man, well, what if all the what if? And Pat was just like, yep, nope, you're going to get back into it. You know, you'll be great one day. You'll be, you know, not only commentating, but speaking and, and traveling the world and sharing your story and impacting kids, not just like me, but kids, adults, you know, people that live in the hearing impaired space and you know it, it's been a journey is that what influenced you to start your own foundation once you moved forward from being with the lady balls that's definitely one of uh one of the reasons you know my parents like i said my parents planted to see when we were younger and i remember as a kid you know christmas would come around my mom and dad would have us go through our toys and we'd have to give some of our toys you know to so some of the kids that were less fortunate and we Thanksgiving, we were giving out Thanksgiving dinners. I mean, we were always doing something with our, our parents. Then you get to college and same thing. You're like we're doing traveling the world and playing in, in different cities, you know, visiting children's hospitals and going to boys and girls clubs and going to schools and we were just doing so much. And then when I got here to Indiana, it, it first started with just my basketball camp. And from the basketball camp, it grew into a fitness clinic and then a mentoring program. And then 
three years in, during that fourth year, it's like, look, you know what? We're doing all these amazing programs for kids. My part, my heart and passion is really for kids. And we, my sister and I sat down, we started the Catch the Stars Foundation. And uh, last year we celebrated 15 years. This year will be our 20th year with the basketball camp. So a lot of really, really great things. That's awesome. What all are you doing right now with, you know, obviously times are a little bit different um, with the pandemic. So how are you all still, you know, keeping up up with the foundation and making sure that you're still able to make an impact just maybe from afar yeah so we actually just uh we just launched a new book and i, I would just happen to have it right here All right yeah we just launched a new book shoot for the stars it literally came out two weeks ago i didn't plan it to be here i promised casey <laughs> um but we are starting a, a virtual online program. So we put together a curriculum that will go along with the book and that'll kick off in a couple of weeks. Uh, we have our scholar athlete dinner coming up. We actually were supposed to do it in May. It got pushed back. So we're hoping that we'll be able to, to do it in June to celebrate the, the senior student athletes that kind of have their careers cut short. So we're hoping to celebrate it in person, but if not, we have uh, we'll do that virtually as well so you know and then our back to school celebration will be in july so we do things year round and once the wmba season get uh get started you know hopefully if, if there's going to be fans in the stand we'll have our group of uh catch the stars kids there so a lot of really good things yeah that's awesome when you look back on your career so far anyways and all the accomplishments that you have had, what's been something that you are just most proud of? I am most proud of our foundation. Um, and I'm most proud of the foundation because when you think about basketball, like even the kids nowadays, I've been retired, I retired in 2016. So some of the kids that are just now getting into basketball have no idea that I played basketball, <laughs> that I was any good. You know, so they don't know me as a basketball player. Now they see me in my executive role. Or they see me with the foundation or at the tea shop. So it's a little bit, it's a lot different. But the one thing I know is through our foundation, we are able to impact kids that may never, may have never been on a basketball court and have never aspired to be a basketball player. So we're, we're affecting kids and impacting lives of kids that, you know, everyday kids. And having those touch points and having those opportunities, one day those kids will grow up and, you know, like I talked about my parents planting that seed for me. Hopefully one day one of those kids will say, man, I remember attending one of the Catch the Stars programs and it was the best experience I ever had in my life. And that moment I knew that one day I wanted to do that. And so that's how you're starting, you know, like if we can impact 10 kids that were in this program and 10 kids that were in this program, just imagine the reach. I mean, we reach over 1,500 kids a year with all the programming that we do. And now with the virtual aspect of it, now think about kids across the world, not necessarily kids that are just in Indiana or just where we focused on our programming. So I'm really excited just, you know, like when I think about things that I'm most proud of, I am most proud of, being able to impact the next generation and hopefully having some type of planting, some type of seed for these kids like Pat did for me. That's awesome. And you are an inspiration to so many. And I just want to thank you so much for taking time out of your day to catch up and speak with me. Thank you, Casey. Thanks for having me.